Hello everyone, in today's discussion we will cover chapter 26 lesson 1 which is invertebrate evolution and diversity. Let's see the learning objectives. Explain what fossil evidence indicates about the timing of the evolution of the first animals. Interpret the cladogram of invertebrates. Uh, students, you can find this lesson on your textbook pages 752 to 756. Well, now let's see the origins of the invertebrates. So, in our discussion, we will try to answer when did the first animals evolve. Generally, fossil evidence indicates that the first animals began evolving long before the Cambrian explosion. For roughly 3 billion years after the first prokaryotic cells evolved, all prokaryotes and eukaryotes were single cells. Animals evolved from ancestors they shared with organisms called xenoflagellates, single-celled eukaryotes that sometimes grow in colonies. Xenoflagellates share several characteristics with sponges, the simplest multicellular animals. Our oldest evidence of multicellular life comes from the microscopic fossils that are roughly 600 million years old. The first animals were tiny and soft-bodied, so few fossilized bodies exist. Recent studies have uncovered incredibly well-preserved fossils of eggs and embryos that are 565 million years old. Well, now let's see traces of early animals. Other fossils from this time period have been tentatively identified as parts of sponges and animals similar to jellyfish. Paleontologists have also identified what are called trace fossils, tracks and burrows made by animals whose body parts weren't fossilized. Uh, now let's see the ediacaran fauna. Some important discoveries about invertebrate life before the Cambrian period come from fossils in the ediacaran hills of Australia. Strange fossils which date from roughly 565 to about 544 million years ago show body plants that are different from those of anything alive today. Many of the organisms were flat and lived on the bottom of shallow seas. They show little evidence of cell, tissue or organ specialization and no organization into a front and back end. Now let's see the Cambrian explosion. The Cambrian period began about 542 million years ago. Two major Cambrian fossils, fossil sites are in Changjiang, China, and in the Burgess Shell of Canada. Cambrian fossils show that over a period of 10 to 50 million, million years, animals evolved complex body plants, including specialized cells tissue and organs. A number of Cambrian fossils have been identified as ancient members of modern invertebrate phyla, such as the fossil of the fossil of Arthropod marella. Some early Cambrian fossils represent extinct groups so peculiar that no one knows what to make of them. By the end of the Cambrian period, all the basic body plants of modern phyla had been established. Later, evolutionary changes, which produced the more familiar body structures of modern animals, involved variations on these basic body plants. 
Now let's see the modern invertebrate diversity. Today, invertebrates are the most abundant animals on Earth. Invertebrates live in nearly every ecosystem, participate in nearly every food web, and vastly outnumber so-called higher animals, such as reptiles and mammals. The cladogram of invertebrates. What does the cladogram of invertebrates illustrate? Let's see this. The cladogram of invertebrates presents current hypothesis about evolutionary relationships among major groups of modern invertebrates. It also indicates the sequence in which some important features evolved. So, cladogram of invertebrates. This cladogram of invertebrates shows current hypothesis of evolutionary relationships among modern invertebrates. Groups shown close together are more closely related than are groups shown far apart. The sequence in which some important features evolved is also shown. Well, now let's see the detail of the cladogram of invertebrates. Let us start with sponges. Sponges, their phylum is Porifera. So Porifera means pore beaters. Sponges are the most ancient members of the kingdom Animalia. They are multicellular, heterotrophic, and they lack cell walls and contain a few specialized cells. So uh, the sponges, they have tiny opening or pores all over their bodies. As we have mentioned, the most ancient animals, they are the most ancient animals and they, uh, they have no true tissue or organs. Uh, let's see the second group, Nidarians. So phylum Nidaria includes jellyfish, sea fans, uh, anemones, hydra, and corals. Nidarians are aquatic, soft-bodied carnivores, uh, radially symmetrical animals with stinging tentacles arranged in circles around their mouth. They are the simplest animals to have body symmetry. So, uh, as we have mentioned, they are aquatic and they are soft-bodied. They are carnivorous and radially symmetrical and stinging tentacles. That, and the tentacles contain uh, stinging cells. Okay, now let's see the arthropods phylum arthropoda arthron means joint podus means foot so this group includes spiders centipedes insects and crustaceans arthropods have bodies divided into segments a tough external skeleton called exoskeleton cephalization and jointed appendage which are structures such as legs and antennae that extend from the body wall. Arthropods appeared in the sea about 600 million years ago and have since colonized freshwater habitats, land and air. Uh, generally, the body of arthropods is uh, divided into segments and they have tough exoskeleton and also they have uh, jointed appendage and cephalization. Okay, well, now let us see uh, nematodes. Nematodes belong to phylum nematoda. Nematodes are unsegmented worms with pseudocelums, specialized tissues and organ 
systems and digestive tracts with two openings, a mouth and an anus. Nematodes were once thought to be closely related to flatworms, annelids and mollusks, but have been found to be more closely related to the arthropods. So, as you can see, uh, nematodes are unsegmented. Uh, they have pseudocelums and they have digestive tract with two openings with a mouth and anus. Some are free living and some are parasitic. Some are terrestrial and some are aquatic. Now let's see the flatworms. They belong to phylum platyhelminths. Flatworms are soft and segmented flattened worms that have tissues and internal organ systems. They are the simplest animals to have three embryonic germ layers, bilateral symmetry and cephalization. Flatworms do not have celems. So, uh, as you can see from the diagram, the flatworms are unsegmented and they don't have celem. They have true tissue and organ uh, systems and they are the simplest animals with three germ layers. Uh, let's see annelids. Uh, they belong to phylum annelida. Analyst means a little ring, so it includes earthworms, some marine worms, and lids. Analids are worms with segmented bodies and a true coelom lined with tissue derived from mesoderm. Uh, as you can see, the analids have segmented bodies and they have true coelom. Some are terrestrial and some are aquatic and some are free living and some of them are parasitic. Uh, let's see the mollusks now. So they belong to phylum mollusca, includes snails, slugs, clams, squids and octopi. So mollusks are soft bodied animals that have an internal or external uh, shell. They have true coelums surrounded by mesoderm and complex organ systems. So many mollusks have a free swimming larva or immature stage called the uh, troco trochophore. Uh, well, as you can see from the diagram, the mollusks uh, have internal or external shells for protection and they have true coelom and also they have uh, complex organ systems and also they possess a uh, troco trochophore which is free living larval stage well now let's see the echinoderms so they belong to phylum echinodermata as you know, echino means spiny and dermis means skin. This group includes sea stars, sea urchins, and sand dollars. Echinoderms have spiny skin and an internal skeleton. They also have a water vascular system, which is a network of water filled tubes that include section cup like tube feet which are used for walking and gripping prey. Most exhibit five parts, radial symmetry, and are deuterostomes. As you can see from the diagram, uh, they have uh, spiny skin, they have internal skeleton for protection, and they have a uh, water vascular system and as we have mentioned five part radial symmetry especially in adults and also uh, they are 
literal stones. Now let's go to the section assessment uh, questions. Let's start with uh, 1A. What was the Cambrian explosion? What was the Cambrian explosion? Uh, okay, here is the answer. It's a period between 530 and 515 million years ago when many modern multicellular phyla first appeared. Let's go to 1B. Explain when does fossil evidence indicate that the first animals evolved? When does fossil evidence indicate that the first animals evolved? So it's roughly 600 million years ago. Now let's go to uh, 1C. What two characteristics of early animals explain the scarcity of animal fossils older than the Cambrian period? What two characteristics of early animals explain the scarcity of animal fossils older than the Cambrian period? Here is the answer for you. The first animals were tiny and soft-bodied. Let's go to 2A. What is a cladogram? As you might know, here is the sample answer. A diagram that shows the evolutionary relationship. It's a diagram that shows the evolutionary relationships among groups of organisms. Well, now let's go to 2B. What does the, the cladogram of invertebrates show? Here is the answer for you. Current hypothesis about evolutionary relationships among major groups of modern invertebrates, the sequence in which some important features evolved. To see which body plant feature evolved first, radial symmetry or detrosome development. As you know, it's the radial symmetry. Students, this is all about chapter 26, lesson 1. For more information, you can uh, watch the videos by following the links that are given on your uh, weekly plan. And until the next lesson, bye-bye.